every single day I'm starting to feel like Mozilla is less of an organization fighting for the free and open web and more of just a tax dodge for the executives because they keep doing things that are just mind-bogglingly dumb while the organization seems to just be collapsing underneath them. So during 2020, there were two massive firings. They laid off like 320 people, which is over 30% of their staff. Yet the executives all took pay rises. And then the Firefox user base continues to shrink every single day, basically alongside everything that isn't Safari or Chrome. And yet, for whatever reason, they decided that right now, in one of the most politically charged times I can think of throughout my entire life, that they would release an article that was titled like this, when they know that most people do not read past the headline and maybe the first paragraph. Now the title is, We Need More Than Deplatforming, and this title alone would make me think, okay, maybe now isn't the time we want to release a blog post that's titled like this. Now, the important thing about this blog post is once you get past all of this nonsense right here, the actual content isn't that bad. But I don't know whether the CEO of Mozilla thought people will actually read the article, which I can't imagine she would actually think that, because that's who actually wrote this article, Mitchell Baker. I would have titled this literally anything else and there would be no controversy whatsoever. Most people don't read past the title and maybe they'll read the first paragraph and the first paragraph starts talking about things like Trump and Capitol Hill, which is obviously going to alienate more of their user base. Maybe it was structured like this for hate clicks or maybe she thought people would actually go out of their way and read the article and be in agreement. Now, I am leaning more towards the former in this case. So I want to talk specifically about the four points being brought up in this article, which are described as precise and specific actions while being unclear and vague. So let's just go with it. The first point we have is reveal who is paying for advertisements and how much they're paying and who is being targeted. Now, as a general rule, I don't really think this is actually a bad thing. Some people might disagree with this, but I don't actually think it's a bad idea to say who's actually funding you. As for the second point about how much you're being paid, I don't really think that's anyone's business unless you're a public figure. I can understand why you'd want to know how much you know a politician is being funded by certain organizations, but if it's just some random blog out there, that's none of your business. But the thing is that in the US, revealing who is actually paying for your advertisements is something you already have to do. A couple of years ago, there was this massive crackdown on YouTube where you had a lot of people doing these sponsored review videos where basically they're being paid by the company to do a positive review without actually revealing that's what was actually happening. And this has sort of come back up again with platforms like Instagram and TikTok where the exact same thing is pretty much happening. A lot of creators and websites do kind of skirt around actually doing this, but what this more sounds like is Mozilla kind of posturing about doing a good thing rather than actually being capable of doing anything because there's nothing Mozilla can really do here unless they say, okay, unless you tell us who is actually funding you, then we just won't show your website in our browser, which would just make me switch to a different browser. There's nothing they could do to actually make someone say who's funding them. But let's just say you actually give them this information, or maybe they do some like independent research and manage to work it out for themselves, which I can't imagine they could really do on a large scale because their funding is already dwindling. What they would probably do is do something similar to the way that YouTube does it, where it has like this little box, you know, on the website, or maybe like a little pop-up somewhere that's like, this website is funded by so-and-so, here is who's being targeted by the ads. You can already get extensions like NewsGuard, which tell you how trustworthy a news source is. I don't think that's inherently a bad thing. The second point is commit to meaningful transparency of platform algorithms so we know how and what content is being amplified to whom and the associated impact. Once again, I don't think this is really that bad. I think it's a fairly sensible point. If you look at, say, the YouTube algorithm, it is pretty much just this magical black box and you can only really guess what the output's going to be based on previous inputs and they could completely change the way that it actually works internally with no indication to you whatsoever. I can't exactly argue against more transparent algorithms because even if, say, the platform that I'm using starts to sense people that I like, 
if I know exactly why that's happening, I can either, one, encourage them to change their content to conform to whatever the new community guidelines are, regardless of how arbitrary they actually are, or I know exactly the sort of people that are going to be affected, and then I can help advocate for those people to move somewhere else that isn't going to try to censor them. The one part of this I don't really care about is the associated impact of the algorithms, because I really don't care how Mozilla wants to interpret the data. As long as they provide the raw data and then let people come to their own conclusion on how the algorithm is actually affecting people, that is going to be fine. Now, internally, they can very well do this with, you know, how Firefox and Thunderbird and things like that works, but without completely killing their browser, I have no idea how they would, you know, encourage other platforms to actually do this. Now, depending on the implementation, the third point, I can definitely see that being a bit of controversy here. So turn on by default the tools to amplify factual voices over disinformation. So this doesn't necessarily sound like a bad thing, but I don't particularly want to rely on Mozilla to tell me what's actually true, because this assumes that Mozilla always has my best intentions in mind. And if you ever think that a company has your best intentions in mind, just please stop, just stop using the internet, you've lost your privilege. So there are two main issues here. The first one is how Mozilla decides to actually implement this, because if it's open source and we can understand how it works and then actually turning off the functionality really does turn it off, that's fine. If you want to have it there as an option, it's kind of just useless, but fine, it's there as an option. But if it's implemented in a proprietary way and it's always running in the background, even if you turn it off, it doesn't actually get turned off. That's a bit of a problem. And we've seen this happen on macOS and Windows. We have these slides which say, hey, it's going to turn this functionality off, but the slider doesn't actually do anything. So it's going to be up to you to decide whether the earlier claims of transparency are going to be applied to this as well. And the final point is how is Mozilla going to decide what sources are actually factual over just being sources of disinformation? Because let's say that we have two outlets and both of them are generally considered to be very reputable. One of them reports that I planted a lemon tree and the other one reports that I planted an orange tree. Which one is spreading disinformation? The correct answer is both of them, because I actually planted an apple tree and it's the guy who talks about DMT aliens who's actually telling the truth. And that is basically the impossible task that Mozilla is setting for themselves. And besides wasting their shrinking funding, the final point is actually fairly reasonable. So work with independent researchers to facilitate in-depth studies of the platform's impact on people and our societies and what we can do to improve things. And this point is sort of implied by the first three points because I would really, really hope that when Mozilla is trying to implement those things, they wouldn't just be winging it and they would actually bring in professionals who know what they're talking about and they would actually look into how they could do it effectively rather than just guessing as they go. So I don't think there's really anything, I guess, that bad about this here. But once again, you sort of have to trust that the researchers aren't biased and that they have the best intentions and that Mozilla isn't actually trying to influence them to produce certain results for whatever reasons, whether that's political or economical or whatever reason why Mozilla may want to see certain results from those studies. Now, don't get me wrong. I know it might sound like I'm defending Mozilla here, but that's not the case at all. I genuinely don't like them. I just have other reasons for not liking them. So, I don't think my web browser should be getting political all the time. That doesn't make any sense. Just be a web browser and that's all you need to be. I don't like the fact that, you know, they'll fire 320 employees and then take a pay rise. And I don't like the fact that a good portion of Mozilla's funding comes from Google through the form of Google searches. Those already are enough of a reason for me not to support Mozilla. This is just some extra stuff where the CEO just does not know how to do PR. There's a very good reason why Tesla keeps a tight leash around Elon Musk, and it wouldn't exactly be a bad idea to do the same thing to Mitchell Baker. Just a very simple word of advice, don't let your CEO write blog posts, especially blog posts where they have a really inflammatory title for literally no reason.
Thank you guys for watching. Before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Montezar, Will, Chico, Bento, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter, the Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, there's some links down below to my Patreon, subscribe to our Libre Pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. And... I'm out.